I was just gonna say that there's uh, been rumblings backstage about wanting to hear the train story. We want to hear the train story as it should be told. Yeah, but here's the thing. You On know, that tragic day in May, whatever it was, here's the 2012. thing. The train story has been told by me to great jocularity. And it's been told been, by me. As a real snooze fest, the Jared version. But what we've never had, either one of us, Jared, is the only true Other eyewitness to the whole there. thing. Jim who saw it all go down, who may have a different and maybe more accurate perspective on the whole thing, I don't know. I, I'm actually excited to hear the actual story for the first time. Okay, so we, um, uh, we were doing a con in, um, in London, and then we were gonna do one next week in Germany. And we stopped through Amsterdam. I'd never been, Jen's best friend lived there, and we were there for literally two nights. And then I needed to be in Germany at 8 a.m. on Saturday, Saturday Sunday, to, to meet our German fans. So, Jared and Rich. you guys are on a train together. You two are planning a trip, and you no, say, okay. let's ask poor old Rich to come with us. We're having a romantic vacation. We were trying to before. Okay, no, wait a minute. Already the story is way wrong. Jared and his lovely wife, Jen. I was by myself, killing time. They were traveling, and they were gracious enough, as a couple, having a lovely time, they were gracious enough to see sad sack Dick Spade traveling by himself. And they said, why don't you come with us? We're taking a, a side trip to Amsterdam. We talked, unfortunately, openly about going to Amsterdam, and somebody went, can I come? That is not true! <laughs> they were not true. Invited Dick Spade. Okay. <laughs> I, I'm gonna oh, that. snap. Hey, I'm gonna interpret because, that. Because the conversation was, I'm gonna invite Richard, and he goes, she was like, he's like, no, and she's like, he's gonna say no. He's gonna get it. You're making this up. You weren't there. I was absolutely there. We're asking. I was. I he was. I don't Hold on. I want to ask Jen Penlegi. Jen, did you ask, hoping slash thinking I would say no? Because this is gonna be awkward. No, no, no. I was being polite. And Polite, yeah. <laughs> In other words, she thought he was going to say no. And he said, why, well, yes, I do want to come. <laughs> Romantic trip to Amsterdam. Where do I sign? <laughs> All right. So great. That's lovely. I would love to ruin your romantic weekend away. <laughs> but I mean, the third wheel. I accept your gracious offer. So myself, Genevieve, and Richard took the... Uh, the boat over to Rotterdam. They, had to, they were taking an overnight romantic boat to Amsterdam with a stateroom. Wait, a boat? Yes. And me. Boat. Yes. A we, boat? Where did the train come in? Just you and your girlfriend. Hey, Robbie, listen to I'm the story. A boat. It, we turned a stateroom into a spate room. <laughs> Boom. Wow, I'm we so sorry, guys. Rotterdam, this right? is really depressing. I don't remember. We took the boat to Rotterdam. Boat, boat to Rotterdam, Rotterdam and, and then train. To Amsterdam. Does that make sense? Yep. Yeah. And then uh, train to Amsterdam, and then took a train from Amsterdam to Frankfurt. And it was a high-speed train. We had to be in Germany the next morning. So, yeah. we yeah. get on the train, yeah. and I'm sitting on the train, and these gentlemen ask to... Spate goes like this. <laughs> but, milady, why don't you go onto the board and go get a table for us? No, uh, myself and your boyfriend have the bags. Okay. And she's like... All right. Uh, <laughs> okay. Well, we really have two minutes of this. So it's his fault that the bags. Wait out. a minute. Yes. Let me start with something. Yes. This is important. A, a lady should never carry her own luggage. I stand behind that. I'm a gentleman, so suck it. Number two, I don't know. This is something you may not know about the pa the panel ladies, but the phrase "traveling light" <laughs> is not one that's ever utilized when speaking of hey. them on the road. Hey. We pack up, and I, I pack like a man who's going on a European trip by himself. I have a small bag. They packed like a circus roadshow. <laughs> this out for a year's journey across the continental United States. They, they travel like it's the Queen's Jubilee celebration. They have like nine trunks. Point spade. Yeah, point spade. No, 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 no. In all fairness, he had three checked things. We had two each. Oh, you know what? One was a guitar. 
You're gonna you're gonna penalize a man for a guitar? I didn't I, it was, I didn't bring yeah. nine like you bring socks. We were. <laughs> he brings an odd number. Yes, that was on purpose. We, you did not. Have, you had two. That's four bags. Listen, you pack whatever you want. Your national treasure. You. <laughs> You have no business packing two giant bags. All right, so oh, lots of bags. In all fairness, in all fairness, one quick demonstration. For me, one of my shirts is like four of Richard's shirts. Like, just pure fabric ratios. His shirts are four times bigger than mine. I mean, it takes more room. That is true. That's actually A lot true. Of fabric. My shoe, big. In fairness, I ended up sleeping in his shoe on the boat. It was, uh... <laughs> It came in very handy, so... That has scientifically been proven, and then so... between the two of us, we should technically even out, I guess. Okay, so they're on the train. So you can get on the train. Wow. Oh! Jim Pagelak, it picks a side! Yeah. Nice. So, we get there, and the train is going to leave at 3 o'clock. It doesn't pull until 2.55, which I guess is how it goes. They figure, you know, get your bags on and you got to get going. Uh, schedule to make. Those train doors close pretty precisely. They're not really waiting around for you. They're open, you get in there, you get crap in, then they close. Whatever, you know, part of you isn't on the train at that point is gonna be blowing along the side of the train for the remainder of the time. And so, uh, I'm like, baby, Jen. Um, <laughs> I call Richard Sweetie. Um, so I'm like, baby, go. Go first on the train and save us three seats together. Like it's, a, it's a four hour train, we'll probably want to get some sleep. So just go, you take care of those seats. Richard and I got the bags. Um, she's like, okay, sure. And so she hops on to get seats and Richard and I start the process of, um, like I'm standing on the platform and the train is this number. And so Richard goes right there in the train, two steps up and I'm grabbing the bags and putting them up. And he's just getting them inside. We figure once they're all inside, we'll set them up. And so I load them all on the train give it a look, say, Richard, we're fine, let's put the bags up in the little compartments. And so we sit down, I'm sweating, because that's what I do. <laughs> and so I sit down, I'm like, ah, all right, and Jen has great seats for us. She's like, thanks, baby. Sure, baby, once again, still done. <laughs> and then she goes, by the way, um, where's the gray bag? They're loading up the luggage, and they sit down, and I, and I look up, and I say, um, Where's my luggage? She's the only one who counts the bags. You and I like, we're like, we're like Mr. Cowboys, we sit down. And she's like, one, two, three, four. Where's, where's the bag, guys? And we're like, so, oh. And I go, the great bag, oh shit. <laughs> so he and I get up and go down the aisle to the train doors. They both stand up because they're both very chivalrous. And the heroes of the story say, we go, we go over like you would. We look out the window, there it is on the platform. We walk towards the doors to go get it, and the doors go Like, oh, there's the silver. <laughs> literally, if this is the door, this is the bag. <laughs> I literally could have just gone, yoink, thank you, and taken the bag, but the train has shut the doors. It's right there, on the platform. We're here, we're like, well, no problem. That, by the way, by the way, that's that's me knocking, and this is Richard. Keep knocking. Good. <laughs> That's not true. This is Richard. I'm doing good, Jared. I got, I got your back. No. So I'm knocking. Rich is behind me like, yeah, doing good. That's gonna do it. <laughs> That's not gonna open it, Richard. I'm knocking. Maybe we knock hard enough. <laughs> and then like nothing's opening up. And so there are some buttons on the wall. Y'all have all been on like Euro trains. Yeah, Euro rails. There's like a red button and a- We're in Europe. I think they've been on Euro trains. I think this is- You know, you know what they call Euro trains here? Trains. You know what they call Thai food in Thailand? Food. So the door shut, so I push the open button. And I push the open button. And I push the open button. And the door's not opening. 
So I'm like, uh, so I push the close, I push the close button. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe the open button's not, not functioning and I'll push it. Nothing happens. And then there's this like lever underneath it. And I'm like, no, okay. And it's just, okay, by the way, the worst thing is it's, it's Jen's bag. So it's not even like it's my bag with smelly t-shirts and it's Jen's and she bought like some nice dresses for dinner and stuff like that. Uh, whatever women do, shoes and <laughs> I still haven't figured it out. Uh, and so it's all her nice stuff in the bag. Um, and so I, I'm like, I guess I gotta pull the lever. And I, I pull the lever, nothing happens. So a lady walks up to the bag. Um, another important part I've got is that um, Bin Laden's just been killed. And so terror alert is like skyrocket. Yeah. Like if you drink a Coca Cola and you put it on the ground and someone taps you, it's like. Well, so, like, if you put your McDonald's bag up, some guys run over, like, like yeah. it would not a good time to leave an abandoned bag. world where you don't want to, like, pull any red flags. You don't want to put an abandoned bag on a train on a platform. Moving yes. train. And so, I'm like, there's a bag on the platform, it's unmarked, it's locked, oh God. and, yeah, and a lady walks up to it, yeah, oh God, is <laughs> you're on track. A lady walks up to it. There's a lady walks by and she sees that the luggage is standing next to the On this side of the, she's over here. She's on this, she's on the platform. Yeah. She'll she'll like, over here. So she walks over. And she walks in here. Hey, she walked over from here. Yeah. She did. People do not have all. This lady walks over here. <laughs> and Richard and I are like banging on the door and the lady kind of hears us and looks and we're like, my, my bag, that's, that's mine, me, me, that, me, me, us. <laughs> it's just like, two silly Canadians. <laughs> and she looks at Jared and I'll do to the camera and she goes. I said, what the F you want me to do about it, Broheim? And now, and now the train starts to move. <laughs> and the train's going like this. And we're like, that was the bag. Here's the bag. Here goes the bag. Jen, your bag's over there. Jen, 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 Jen. And the train's running this way. That Frankfurt's that way. Bag is here, going that way, essentially, because we're going this way. So the train takes off. Uh, Sam's back, without that. I'm now panicking. I'm profusely sweating. I'm storming up and down the train. I'm like a giant in Europe. All these, like, all these, like pacifist Amsterdam shows. Just Europe? All these, uh, like, peaceful Netherlands people are sitting there, and I'm like, oh my god, I don't know what's going on. Richard and I kind of like, I got a, uh, what, uh, uh, uh. So you turn to them and you say, so I Calmly, I'm sitting in the chair, and they're panicking like, what? <laughs> I'm just sitting in the chair, and I'm like, it's cool. <laughs> I think this is kind of funny. So, it's fine. It's just stuff. We're going to stop, and you know what? I'll go back. I'll get the bag. All fine. true. We're going to stop. She said that she suggested she would go back to the next time. She, brought, she injected logic in a process where we felt logic didn't belong. So and we go back. So that was. So, well, we go. We, we we vetoed her idea, which right. was the strong one. We go, and so I run. I'm like, you know what? We're like two cars from the edge. Oh my I'm gonna God. run the conductor and just tell him I, I, the, the bag. I don't know. Like I don't know who to call. Like, hi, train station. Hi, bag. I'm in Amsterdam. I don't my phone. He's just dialed 35 numbers and a plus sign. Uh, so I'm like, I'll just tell the conductor. He'll know what to do. So he goes. You go that way, I'll go this way. Go find the conductor. So I sprint that way through all the trains. Go. It's not a slow, it's, not a, it's a slow process. Yeah, you say that. But somehow I feel like on his side, the train doors just knew he was coming and opened. Jared goes, you go that way, I'll and, go this and way. we went and, and, he, <laughs> and he went to that end of the train, and we're going to demonstrate our stride length that are slightly different. He went that way, I went this way. 
Jared went ten cars down. We came back. <laughs> so I run to the end of the train where the conductor sits. I push the button and the door opens. But there's no conductor on that side. <laughs> because the conductor pitter patter walked to the other side of the train because we're going that way now. Meanwhile, there's a couple of people who recognize Jared from the show, and they're watching 6-7 Jared kind of like a sprint through the train. <laughs> Running around, the other guy's like, couldn't find anybody. And so I walk back through the thing, and Richard's kind of like, I don't know what to do, man. He's like, I ran three carts that way, I couldn't find anybody, but works. like, what do we do? I was like, I don't know, and I just can't get my nerves down, and I'm like, I don't know what to do. Like, I can't just go back to the exploded. <laughs> and I run back to the doors and I see a thing that says, in case of emergency, push button. There's a little plate of glass with an emer emergency do not push. And one of those like movie style red buttons behind the plate of glass. There's one more button we haven't hit, but it's behind plexiglass. And <laughs> And Ankh over yeah, here y goes. Y'all seen, seen the doors? There's like, I, I, th I think it's glass. It's not plexiglass. You do know these are Europeans. Again, there's a train, a train taking people. It's like Euro glass. You guys ever been in a car and there's a thing in the front and it steers the car? It's called a steering wheel. It's a Euro wheel. It's a Euro steering wheel. <laughs> So there's a, 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 a thing under, under... Real quick, at the point where this was happening, how fast were we going? Did it just where start it? It? You're like a few hundred yards away from the... No, 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 we're pulled out of the miles. We're, we've spent two minutes going on a high-speed train. <laughs> yeah. No, the station is long gone. We're way, we're way, we're way gone. So, now there's a plexiglass button. And I look at it, and it's behind plexiglass, and then I go... <laughs> So, I punch the glass, and I push the do not push the button button. <clears throat> Bloody in your knuckles. Glass breaks, my hand is bleeding. Yeah. Glass breaks, and I sort of like scratch it out, and I'm like, well shit, I've broken the glass, I might as well push the button. <laughs> and I'm kind of standing like this, but when I push the do not push this button button, Who is that man? I've never seen him. Who is that giant over there? 
So I'm kind of like, everybody's looking, the noise is loud, I punch through the glass and the door is flung open, but now we're in the middle of nowhere because the trains are going. It's not like we're in a station, we're on train tracks, like in Europe, in the middle of Amsterdam or wherever we go. And then here comes suddenly people who work there. Sure, now they show up, the conductors. Woke those guys up. Here they come, sprinting this way and this way. First of all, there's a there's like a British guy in the scene. He goes, "That was a very big mistake, young man." <laughs> We're like, thanks, Jeeves. So this lady comes running in, and she's like, "Who who who pushed the button? Who pushed the button?" And I kind of, <laughs> I, I, I did. And she runs up and very sincerely goes. What's wrong? What, what's, what's going on? Like, I think she thinks, like, someone's got a gun. <laughs> I am having a heart attack. My wife is giving birth. I'm giving birth. Where is the emergency? Where is the person with the heart attack? Or the, the dying dog? What, what, why are you doing it? She's not thinking some D-bag. <laughs> and I, I say, uh, my, my wife's bag is back on the platform. And she goes like, and she's like, I, I'm pretty certain English wasn't her first language, though she spoke great English, but I can see her kind of go like, I mistranslated that. <laughs> and she kind of rewinds it in her head and says it again, and it still translates into my wife spags at that point. She, and she goes, you, you push the emergency button because your wife's bag is on the platform? And I, I say, um, yes. <laughs> She goes, you can't push the button, the do not push button, because your wife left her back on the platform. And I, I go, ma'am, look, I'm, I'm very sorry, I didn't realize we stopped the train. And she goes, you didn't stop the train. You stopped all of the trains. You stopped all the trains in Northern Europe. <laughs> I'm glad y'all were having a good time. Because when one train stops, the rest have to stop so they don't smush into each other. So, for your wife's suitcase, everyone's gonna miss work, planes aren't gonna take off on time, no one knows what's going on. And I was like, uh, I didn't know that either. So, and, and she kind of like, she goes, you didn't stop the train, you stopped all the trains and kind of like walks away because now some other guy is there and he looks at me and goes, this is gonna be very expensive. And I was like, oh my God. And I was like, okay, we'll figure that out. But in the meantime, in all honesty, like I don't want my wife's most prized possessions to be destroyed. And I don't want someone to look at her underwear. Just kidding. Um, she, no, I'm not. But so, so, she, was it? Thank you. <laughs> and I was like, okay, in the meantime, my wife's bag honestly is on the platform. What can we do about it? So luckily she, she was a train person. Part train, part person. <laughs> she was able to call and say hi if there's a gray bag then don't destroy it. It's, we have somebody here who owns it. It hasn't been destroyed yet. But it wasn't. Someone found it, and we got it. But the guy goes, this is gonna be very expensive. Well, this is gonna cost you. This is gonna cost you big. And I was like, okay. And I was like, how much does it cost to stop the entire European train system? This is gonna be bad. I'm thinking, you know, what can I sell? I'll probably have to, you know, offer my services in some way to help pay this thing off. The guy walks up to me and goes, it's going to be about 150. He didn't say any unit. He didn't say like 150 drachmas or He just said 150,000 billion, I don't know. And I kind of go, whoa. And I was like, all right. And I go and I sit down next to Jen and I go, baby, if this is 150,000 euros, I'm just going to run. <laughs> I love you. Um, I have my phone. I'll be in Europe. But I was like, they, it's not a plane, 
where you give me your passport to train. I bought a ticket, they don't know who I am. <laughs> and so I was like, if it's 150,000 euros, I'm just gonna run. Like, the door's open, I'm just gonna close it. <laughs> she was like, yeah, you are. <laughs> There's always at that moment that some, like, fan walks up and goes... <laughs> and, as you guys know, Jared Dixon, super nice guys. It was just so funny to see him going, No. No. <laughs> to, if, you want, if you want my picture, let me get with you. But don't take my picture right now. I'm very upset right now. I'm trying to figure out what's going on right now. <laughs> and he went back over and got our picture with her. Like, he, he did the right thing. But just for that split second, he was trying to figure out what's going on. How much he's going to pay for this giant mistake. So I get back up, and the guy brings out his little thing, and he's like, all right, 150 euros. And you see Jared process it like you're screwing with me, right? But then you also see him say to himself, I don't want to say you're screwing with me, right? Because then they'll get insulted and something bad. So, that's it? I mean, like it's nothing, but I was like, okay, uh, here you go, uh, can I wash that? Uh, and so, that cost 150 euros, but we got the bag back. And that's <laughs> two great additions to the story. Uh, one was, uh, Jensen said that after going to see the conductor and there's no one there and going back and squishing the button, and the lady's saying, what's wrong? He's like, the response should have been, there's no one driving the train! I said, there's no one at that end of the train! There's no one at that end of the train! No one driving the train! No one's driving the train! Oh God, who's driving this train? Nobody! Ah! The second place addition to the story is Mark Shepard, who I told the story, and he basically, I'm not gonna say the word, but he said, F you. <laughs> and I was thinking he was probably on a train somewhere. He missed a flight or connection because some jerk off like something. I don't like that you made my bloody train stop in the middle of it. That was you. I can't believe you made me miss my connection. Somewhere Mark was in northern England and all the trains stopped and he like screwed up his vacation and he's thinking. There was a train wreck, and there was a train wreck. It just happened to be six four with flowing water in there. Um, and I was like, "Did you miss something?" He goes, "No, but I've lived in London my whole life, and I've always wanted to stop a train." <laughs> he goes, "You're there for a week, and you do it, and it costs 150 euros." Our story is like we're telling you the second story. Meanwhile, I'm seat 13C. <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm in Germany and waiting for a train. <laughs>